So, today we are going to talk about soma clonal variation and then the applications how it is useful and what are the demerits of soma clonal variation in plant tissue culture and then uh, how we do micro propagation. Now, first let us talk about the soma clonal variation. So, the growth of the plant cell and their regeneration is an asexual process which involves mitotic division of cells. So, we know now the uh, ability of the plant cells to regenerate because they are totipotent in nature or is because of this successive continuous div uh, division of plant cells. So, which is because of the mitotic process. Now, uh, whenever the cell has to or the callus has to form or the callus has to regenerate into a plant and or any organ, the cell has to continuously keep on dividing. Every cell, single cells undergoes hundreds of division cycles finally to lead to differentiation and the <coughs> regeneration process. Because of this rapid multiplication, there is instability which is in many different forms. You can see it in ultimately in phenotype, there will be in terms of chromosomal instability, genetic instability. When I say genetic instability, it would involve in terms of size, number uh, of chromosomes. Then it can also uh, show up as change in biochemical instability which means suddenly you will see some new compounds getting formed or the yield of the existing compounds changing. Then uh, I was talking about phenotypic variability. Phenotypic variability you can see if the regenerants have come out of uh, this soma clonal after this soma clonal variations you will find that they are not clonal progenies. There will be variation in terms of which is visible in terms of maybe flower color, maybe in terms of leaf size, height of the plant branching patterns. So, these are different kinds of variations which can happen because of this soma clonal variation. So, if the objective is to do clonal propagations of the plant, then soma clonal variation is has a demerit. So, the occurrence of an uncontrolled variation during the callus regeneration is termed as soma clonal variation. Now, this leads to what? This leads to variation found in the plants regenerants when you are using cells or callus in in vitro cultures. And because we are using somatic cells generally in in vitro cultures, so therefore the term somat uh, soma clonal variation. So, cell and tissue cultures they undergo frequent genetic changes and these get expressed in the form of biochemical and at molecular level changes. Now, what causes soma clonal variations? Now, we know that the plants are totipotent and as I said every cell needs to divide a number of times before that redifferentiation and dedifferentiation and then again redifferentiation happens. So, because of this sometimes there is a ploidy change, sometimes you will find there are karyot alterations. When I say karyotypic alterations which means you will find that there are recombinations happening or there may be uh, activation of uh, transposon elements. There can be single gene mutations which might happen or when I say activation of transposon elements and different recombination events might happen which means that these are those gene elements which can change their relative position in the plant chromosome when I am saying plant chromosome because I am talking with respect to plant cell. So, the when these get activated now why this is happening we were talking this may happen because of many reasons. For example, it depends on the genetic makeup of the explant which has been used the ploidy level of the explant which has been used. Then it also depends on the culture conditions sometimes the if there is very high concentrations of phytohormones that can also lead to this. If there are stress conditions uh, those who work in plant tissue cultures it is recommended that the time of subculture, the uniformity of the inoculum which you use which means the quality of inoculum has to be taken care of. The reason to avoid these soma clonal variations if the objective whether it is to produce a secondary metabolite the product quality and the product 
quantity has to be kept consistent. If you need to have reproducible results, then therefore, these have to be taken care that the inoculum which you use for subculture has to be same in quality and age, then uh, the culture conditions have to be kept same, sudden changes in conditions can also lead to epigenetic variations. So, when we say soma clonal variations, some of the epigenetic variations uh, like for example, DNA methylation can happen. So, which is also a part of an example of which can cause soma clonal variation. Then uh, uh, I said some uh, even addition of uh, chemicals like colchicine. Now, uh, this may bring about a change in the chromosome number and the ploidy levels. So, uh, that can also cause then soma clonal variations, but generally you would not use mutagenic agents in the medium. So, when you are doing plant tissue culture, it may be sudden changes in the culture conditions or if you delay the subculture cycle for very long periods. So, it happens when there is a very long term, it takes time, it does not uh, immediately happen, but if there are stress conditions continuously provided for a number of subculture cycles, then this can lead to soma clonal variations in the culture. Now, what are the methods of assessment? How will you come to know that there has been possibly a soma clonal variation in the culture? So, there can be three methods. One is uh, you will see a change in phenotypic parameters, you can find out from that. Now, in phenotypic parameters, there can be two ways quantitative, qualitative. Now, quantitative people measure plant height, the clonal propagation is happening. So, actually you will see the same, you should see similar phenotypic parameters, but if you see a change in the leaf size or a plant height or in the internodal regions, the length, so then that is an indication. Now, qualitative for example, in flowering patterns, the color change happening. Then physiological parameters, physiological parameters means functional. Now, the minute there is a change in functional characteristics, you can see a change in the protein characteristics. So, which means the differential expression of proteins or even the total protein content. So, which you can see on the gel electrophoresis. Now, uh, then again your secondary metabolite like for example, we saw uh, in Vaila Udarata, I was mentioning in the earlier classes during the introductory that we were working on class of plant peptides called cyclotides from a medicinal plant called Vaila Udarata. Now, what we observed was when the plant was uh, brought in vitro and we could generate the in vitro plantlets and we did a study on uh, the array of cyclotides being produced from the same plant material which we got from the horticulture which was being maintained at IIT Madras. We saw some novel cyclotides coming out. So, suddenly, so which means that some of these variations which might have happened because of the in vitro conditions which may be stress to the culture or which may have caused these variations ultimately then leading to variations in its biochemicals in synthesis. It is not that the genes were not present, but maybe these genes were not expressed, but because of the conditions which were provided inside the lab could lead to expression of the genes of other cyclotides. Now, what are the factors which can affect soma clonal variation? The source of the explant I said, which means the genotype of the explant or the ploidy levels. In plants, it is well known. So, then medium composition, medium composition which means as I said if there is higher amounts of uh, phyto uh, hormones or plant growth regulators then it can act as a stress. Uh, for example, BAP and 2,4-D then uh, they can bring about karyotypic alterations. So, please remember when I say genetic variability which can happen is in terms of chromosome number, in terms of chromosome shape, size these can be the changes. What other factors? Culture period, generally long term cultures, you keep them for very long under a conditions, then you will see these changes happening. The subculture period can be a factor, then the subculture frequency. So, it is recommended keep things consistent, whatever conditions are being kept. Now, what is the molecular basis of this variation? Now, this can arise due to single gene mutations which can happen in the cultured cells which can be because of the conditions which you provide. 
then changes in the cytoplasmic genome might happen which can be also a part of soma clonal variation. Now, when I say changes in the cytoplasmic genome which means what? Where are these changes happening? Or the chloroplast. So, uh, sometimes it is also observed some plasmids they get extra chromosomal material getting integrated into mitochondrial genome and bringing about a change. Then as I said trans activation of transposable elements. Now, tra what are transposable elements? Transposable elements these are uh, small DNA sequences which can change their relative position in the chromosome. So, when the recombination happens because of this jumping these are called jumping genes. So, then there can be a genetic variability. Now, soma clonal variation it can also happen because of the mitotic crossing over. Generally crossing over it is a, a, a natural phenomena to bring about to increase genetic variation in the progenies <coughs> which we know it is a well known part of meiosis. But when it happens in mitosis then this can also cause because soma clonal variations the cell division is happening because of mitosis the cells are continuously dividing because of the process of mitosis. If during this continuous division some crossing over happens which means the gene transfer in the homologous pairs of the uh, chromosomes then this can cause a genetic variability which means chromosomal instability. Now, changes in organelle, DNA then also because of there is protein variation as we uh, had spoken about. So, there can be ultimately a change in enzymes. You can have same enzymes, same sequence, but their functionality might change or differ in the amino acid sequence, but they catalyze the same reactions. Now, what therefore, if you see all these things now I hope you can make out that how can we exploit soma clonal variations. Now, because there is a chance by inducing epigenetic variations by changing culture conditions you can bring about a change in its phenotypic parameters their physiological parameters. Therefore, it also gives you a chance to make a desirable change in the cell line. So, this can be therefore, used for choosing a disease resistant cell line or salt resistant drought resistant plants then environmental stress tolerance can be because of salt or drought any kind of stress can be used. Now, talking about micro propagation. Now, what is micro propagation? Micro propagation is multiplication of plants through plant tissue culture. Now, in plants even highly mature and differentiated cells they retain we know the ability to regress to meristematic state. So, the vegetative method of propagating plants is termed as micro propagation or cloning tissue culture. Now, uh, what are the different applications? For example, in medicinal plant if you need to preserve the medicinal plants then this can be of use. Under in vitro conditions you can generate large amount of plantlets of the same <coughs> genetic makeup and then those can be planted. But this is again a very slow process because once you are generating these they need specific this is all being done under controlled conditions. So, very gradually then and hardening of these plantlets is required. So, as to get them acclimatized to environmental outside conditions and then they are transferred. So, what is required the differentiated cell undergoes de-differentiation, re-differentiation and then a new plant is obtained. Now, let us see what are the different kinds of micro propagation methods. So, development of shoots from these pre existing meristems or nodal regions ensures genetic stability of the regenerants and is termed as axillary budding. Now, similarly, this is also a method to develop virus free plants as we were talking about in the last class because these are meristem regions rapidly dividing. In so, there is less chance that the virus can get propagated from the infected areas of the plant to these regions at the same rate as the cells are dividing. And moreover on top of it the vascular bundle is still not formed. So, the chances that the virus can propagate to these regions is missing or is less. Now, the principal method for propagation in industry is 
axillary budding. Now what is adventitious budding? Adventitious budding is from directly the explant from the organs you see new de novo meristems in induction which means that uh, they are not from the existing meristems region, but new meristematic regions get formed and directly from the explant you see organogenesis happening. So, it is de novo formation of adventitious buds, adventitious buds which means not from the pre-existing meristems may occur directly from the tissues of the explant. Now, they also form indirectly. So, there is always a chance where a callus phase, it is not that if you are not, it depends on the species. Sometimes it may not happen, the same conditions you are trying, it depends on the genetic makeup, the species on which you are working. So, if direct is not possible, then generally it becomes more conducive if an indirect phase, which means the callus phase is involved. Even in somatic embryo induction, you will find that because it is so much dependent on the species response and depending on the objective, then it is preferred to use a callus phase and then regenerate into organ cultures. Now, as I said axillary bud budding, then uh, adventitious budding and you can even do micropropagation using somatic embryos. Now, somatic embryos which we know as synthetic seeds, this can also be used to generate large amount of plantlets in smaller amount of time and space. Now, what is a demerit included here? Although you can get large amount of plantlets, large amount of plant material in less time and space. Now, because it is through somatic embryos and if you are using an in intermediate callus phase, which means indirect somatic embryogenesis, then there will be genetic variability in these plantlets. So, if the purpose is, it depends on the objective. If the purpose is not clonal propagation, if the uh, clonal or the genetic stability is not a requirement. It is suppose it is being used for fuel, if you just need to do forestry or if you need to propagate a weed uh, just for the sake of biomass to be used for biofuels generating biomass. So, then clonal propagation might not be a uh, need. So, then if you can compromise then synthetic seeds is a good way of multiplication of those plants. So, somatic embryos can be used for pro production of synthetic seeds. So, if you can see in the picture, these are gel beads. So, it is nothing but like you do plant cell immobilization. Similarly, somatic embryos are immobilized. So, what is critical here? The viability of the somatic embryos in the gel. So, what are the advantages? Small space requirement in case of micro propagation, then plantlets produced are free from insects and microbes because they have been grown under controlled conditions. Then virus elimination is possible, why you know now the reason because we are using making use of the Mary stems to bring about the micro propagation. Then reproducible system as the conditions are being maintained under controlled environment everything is being done, so it is reproducible then production is unaffected by the seasonal variations as which might happen in the natural conditions of propagating a plant. So, these are the stages which will be involved selection and establishment of an aseptic culture, then multiplication of the propagule, then plantlet regeneration and preparation and transfer to the field. The step of preparation and transfer to the field is a long drawn, it takes time, 